Are you a new real estate investor and you're still struggling to get your first real estate deal because you don't have the funding? Or are you a wholesaler and uh, you want to stay in some deals but don't have the funding for that either? Or you may be a seasoned real estate investor and you just want more funding at cheap interest rates for your deals. Well, if any of that applies to you, don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into the money. Well, welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and I'm so glad you decided to join in. If this is your first time, we talk all things about real estate and specifically about private money. So if you've been tuning into the show, you know I have amazing guests, and today is no exception. He's a dear friend. We're in masterminds together. But before I introduce him and we learn what's going on in his world, I know that many of you all that have been tuning into the podcast, you know by now just how passionate I am about private money. But I know I hear real estate investors saying all the time and just struggling to raise private money or to get funding for their deals. Well, I can help you with that because I just finished writing my brand new money guide, which is titled Seven Reasons Why Private Money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. And I want you to have this guide. I want to help you get your funding. It's absolutely free. You can download it and get it immediately. So you can go over to www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide, and you can download this. It'll get you started on the fast track to getting private money. Again, that's www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. Well, my guest today founded realestateinvestor.com back in 2005 out of a need to scale and grow his own real estate investing and home buying business. Well, with a long successful career and enterprise in emerging technology markets, Gary saw the vision for realestateinvestor.com. Now, as he worked to develop and use the initial product and service, he saw his real estate business flourishing by allowing him to work smarter, not harder, and focusing on the one thing that makes money, and that is talking to sellers and making offers. So that's when realestateinvestor.com began offering its flagship product and services done for you. Now, according to my guest, he says, instead of businesses focusing on closing deals and maximizing profits, they hit a wall trying to build and do everything themselves. Well, realestateinvestor.com caters to top producing agents, real estate investors, and smaller hedge funds who are looking for a competitive advantage in their local markets. So under the leadership of my guest today, this service has launched a technology revolution within the real estate niche, offering an alternative to the multiple listing service by bringing pre-screened motivated sellers and buyers face-to-face -face at the right time. My guest currently resides in Northern California with his wife and two daughters, where he continues to manage a global team for realestateinvestor.com. He's actively involved in real estate investing and private lending as well. And with that, Welcome to the show, my dear friend, Gary Boomershine. Hello, Gary, and how are you? Yeah, Jay, it's great to be on here. I know we've been uh, working to get this scheduled, and it's a pleasure. And always love our content-rich uh, dialogues and, and uh, giving you know, valuable content to all of your loyal listeners. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we get it done, and people um, that are listening today will uh, come away with some really good nuggets, and hopefully it helps you get a little further to achieving financial freedom and having a life, which most of us in this business uh, got in. And, uh, and it, you know, when you crack the code, it's a lot of fun. So. Absolutely. Well, Gary, um, it's been a little while since we had you on the podcast. So how about um, uh, tell everybody that's tuning in here uh, your background story and how it is you're qualified to do what you do. Yeah. So, Gosh, I grew up in a real estate family. Um, I, uh, I was actually a licensed agent. My parents owned a brokerage, real estate brokerage 
Yeah, so I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. I'm from uh, I'm a, from the California San Francisco Bay Area. My parents owned a real estate brokerage called Boomershine Realtors, and we had a suite of rental properties. And so I was a licensed agent three weeks after turning 18 um, and actually paid for college by holding open houses and door knocking and uh, and also working on some of our rental property. What's really interesting, I had no interest in real estate uh, at the time. I went down the path of Silicon Valley. Uh, it was I got my license and graduated in 1987. It was right before the whole dot-com explosion. I was a computer engineer and uh, I got picked up to one of the largest technology management and consulting firms in the world called Accenture. It was awesome. I traveled all over the world, worked 80 hour weeks and only saw the inside of buildings. And, um, and then after doing that for years, I went into enterprise sales for some of the largest uh, software companies in the world. And uh, it was the same thing. I was actually working 80 hour weeks and had no life. And in 2004, my wife and I, we had two kids. We had a two month old, Ashley, who's now 18. And Haley, who was four, my wife and I went cold turkey into real estate. We said, we want a life. Um, you know, I would come home and even the dogs would bark at me because they didn't know me. So we took the plunge in 2004, cold turkey. And uh, I would never recommend that to anyone. Um, it's not the best practice because we had a $700,000 mortgage. We had two kids and both of my, both my wife and I went without income to do real estate. And um, it was the very first deal. Uh, I gave myself 90 days um, to actually, I knew sales and I knew some real estate. I took a course and um, to go buy some properties. And our first property was five hour, it was a five hour drive. I won't go into the detail, but um, through the grace of God, we ended up making $181,000 on that first deal. Wow. And I knew what was interesting is that first property, the seller offered me $10,000 to take the house. True story. Wow. And um, what I found out is he was in default. And this, the strategy that I, I, that I went down at that point in time doesn't work today. But he was $20,000 on a property. There was equity in it. And his, he, 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 was, he basically said, hey, if it's $20,000 behind, if I give you $10,000 and you come up with $10,000, that's the $20,000 to bring the property current, and then I'll deed the house to you. But I ended up getting one of the most amazing short sell deals I've ever had. I had one of the largest banks in the country who thought they were in third position, right? They thought they were in third position on the loan. They were actually the primary lender. And so I was able to take a $165,000 loan and got it paid off full satisfaction for thirty one grand. Good so night. Bought this house for 31 grand. Then I made every mistake known to mankind. I rehabbed, I had to rehab it twice because I brought a drug addict contractor in uh, that completely screwed everything up. But you know what? <clears throat> this business takes tenacity and commitment. And I, you know, by burning down, uh, you know, all my, it was like the Napoleon thing where I burned all my ships. I didn't have, you know, failure was not an option. And that's the one thing I would say for everybody, especially especially if you're new. This business works, but you have to do the work and you have to basically follow the best practices. And the, the money piece of this business is huge. And, I, and I, even my daughter, I have a 22-year-old daughter, and she said, Dad, how do I actually buy a house if I don't have any money? And I'm like, it comes down to finding the deal. If you find the right deal, the money will come to you. And um, And so... Anyway, I've, I've done well north of 500 transactions. Um, in fact, I made a huge family change this last year. We were going to get out of California. I call it the communist state of California. We were going to leave completely. So given the place of the market, we came together. We unloaded everything. We unloaded everything uh, to go debt-free. Um, we were going to leave California. We spent most of the year traveling this last year. And I rented an 8,000 square foot uh, Airbnb up in the mountains by Yosemite uh, on the cheap. I got this thing for about 20 cents on the dollar in terms of what they wanted to rent it for. And then we decided to go to Florida, to go to uh, parts of Arizona, 
Idaho, Montana, uh, basically more free states. And at the end of the day, we ended up coming back to this particular area and uh, love it. Yeah. Nobody knows about or even thinks about COVID. It's very free, like-minded people. And um, I decided to drop some direct mail and um, it's off the hook. So California historically is a very tough market for finding sellers or going direct to the seller. We call that off market, you know, going direct to the seller, which is direct mail, might be cold calling, text messaging. And so I dropped $10,000 worth of mail and I've never had so many qualified opportunities. So we picked up three properties in the last six weeks. Uh, one with owner financing, uh, which is, uh, I'm a specialist at. Um, one And that property, we're going to turn into a long-term property that we hold. We bought another that I got uh, for about 50 cents on the dollar that we're doing a rehab without me doing any of the work. And my kids are actually involved in it to learn. And we bought another property that I'm in right now that's an Airbnb. And uh, it's it's awesome. So this business this business works. It takes commitment and then following the best practices, the people that know the business of how it works, like you, Jay. And um, uh, that's my quick story. The only other thing I'd say is that um, I am really good at closing deals. I love negotiating and building win-win relationships with the seller and also raising money. And But how do you find those deals? And so with my technology background, I created a little direct mail system years ago, and it's turned into realestateinvestor.com. We are the largest marketer in the real estate niche. We sent over 90 million pieces of direct mail for real estate investors uh, like us that are on this call. And uh, with technology that does all the automation and also a phone team, a very qualified phone team that does all of the hard work of taking the leads and then talking to the seller, qualifying them, and kicking back the good ones, all done for you, for a fraction of the cost of you doing it on the, on your own. So people come to us, both agents and investors saying, hey, I'm looking to buy three houses this month or on every month. And we put together a plan and then we do it for them so that they can focus on the high money making activities. And well, I'm, Gary, I'm kind of- you know, it's like who else out there in the in the United States or the world has got that kind of service where you've got like, pre-qualified motivated sellers brought to you on a silver platter and all you got to do is close it. That's correct. Yeah. You know, a lot, a lot of people, they, you know, they think that, Oh, go buy, go hire a VA. Everybody says go hire a virtual assistant in the V in the Philippines. And that does work. There's only one problem. You have to find them. You have to train them. You got to manage them and then you have to keep them busy. And that means that you have to be the expert at marketing and what to say to a seller and train them on it. And so a lot of people will go and they'll say, oh, I'm going to go hire a $5 or $7 an hour virtual assistant. But then they start, you know, after two or three months, they wonder why they're, they're not getting any deals. Well, that's where we come in. We actually have a trained team that does all of it, all of the work. It's setting up the auto dialer, making sure that the sellers are talked to correctly, because at the end of the day, there's there's marketing and then there's sales. Right. Or you got to drive the leads, then you got to turn those leads into gold. And people don't realize it's all about the follow up and that work should never be done by any of us. So it doesn't matter what market you're in, about 45 leads. Okay, these are sellers that will put up their hand, will turn into an average of one deal. All right, 45 leads, you're going to get a lot. I call them the good, the bad, and the ugly. You're going to get a lot of ugly sellers, and it's a lot of kissing of frogs. And (laughs) if you're an investor, you know, that's $10 an hour work. And as an investor, we should be doing $1,000 an hour work. And a lot of people get trapped in this booby trap because marketing is a return on investment. It's not an expense. So I know if I spend $2,500, I'm going to get a deal in in this local market. So $2,500, you know, I spent 10 grand, I bought three houses, and I got another four or five that I'll buy just off of those existing leads, because I know that it's going to take some follow-up, and some of these sellers, they're just not ready yet. 
And I let another team do that. That's what realestateinvestor.com does. So at the right time and the right place, that's when I can get on the phone and make great offers and close great deals. That's fantastic, Gary. So um, so in your area where you just you know drop that direct mail, you're buying three houses, what would you say is the average equity or the average profit that you're looking to gain off of those deals per deal? Yeah. So, you know, my my strategy is a little different. I, I uh, you know, a lot of people are wholesalers. Um, I, I'm not a wholesaler. Hey, I Gary, do. did you yeah. know since 2003, I've been full time in this since 2003, I've never wholesaled a deal in my life. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I didn't even know how to buy with cash until 2013. I went from 2004 to 2013. And I never actually use cash. I bought almost everything creatively. And um, it was Chris Chico, who was kind of the godfather of wholesaling, that showed me that model. Wholesaling for me, <clears throat> it, it's a transaction, right? And I don't like, you know, I call it you need cash now, there's cash flow, and then there's cash later. Now, cash now means a one time transaction, it means you do some work. And then you get paid one time. Uh, that's also a job. That's a job, or I consider just over broke. So wholesaling is great, but I'm looking for passive income. So cash flow is typically on rental property where you're getting a spread, right? Or lending and and getting a spread. And then cash later is where we're getting, you know, the, a renter is paying down your loan and you're building up huge amounts of equity. And this whole game is a finance game. So wholesaling for me is purely a way to, you know, pay some staff. But really what I'm looking for is the long-term passive income. So I picked up three houses. I got, I'll just talk about the first one. The first one was a, a property that had a crappy tenant in it. So it was an older seller. She had a property that needed a lot of work. Um, it was a little A-frame. And I picked it up for 145000 in California. So I, I, got, I didn't know you could buy a house for 145000 in <laughs> California. Well, we're buying, here's the thing. And you, I know, Jay, you've told this. We're not buying houses. We're buying problems. So when I'm talking to sellers, I'm looking for a problem. So this had an older seller, a rundown house, and a crappy tenant in California. And so I ended up buying it for about 50 cents on the dollar. Um, I even at the very end, I even got a ten thousand dollar discount. I went in in this new area. I went and found out who are the attorneys that specialize in real estate. There were three of them. I hired all three. To, you know, a retainer. Frankly, be, part of it is because I'm in a new market, and the fact that I've got all three real estate attorneys representing me. If I ever have a problem down the road. I don't want these real these attorneys to be able to represent anybody to come after me. So I always go into a market and hire all the attorneys I possibly can. I hired an attorney even before I closed the deal. Uh, gave him a three thousand dollar retainer, of which, by the way, it only cost me seven hundred bucks. I'm getting the twenty three hundred dollars back to start an eviction. So I started the eviction before I even closed on the house. Okay, ask ask me how I did that. Uh, it was really fun. <laughs> And turned out, I like win-win solutions. Uh, I don't like, there's no reason to actually have a bad tenant. So I went in and made friends with the tenant and told them that I'm not their problem. I'm there to help them and became very good friends with the tenant. In fact, the tenant not only moved out, the tenant actually brought their, the husband works for a construction company. And he said, gosh, Gary, we love you. And we're going to bring our team in for one day and we're going to completely clean up the house and get all the junk out. And they didn't want any money for it either. And so I got this house, got it vacant. My wife wanted to get the kids involved because um, the kids have been wanting to get involved in real estate. And so they started the rehab project without me. And so we found some local people uh, and the property is almost completely rehabbed. We're going to flip that property. <laughs> We're going to turn that property. We'll make about eighty thousand dollars net, and and so that's one of the properties. The other one, it was an older seller. Um, she's seventy-five. She had a free and clear house, 
and she didn't want to pay capital gains. And so I was able to buy the property uh, with a very small down payment. So I bought, I bought the property for $325,000. It's as is, retail value would sell for about three eighty five. dollars so I bought it for three twenty-five dollars under market. I put $35,000 down, $35,000, so about 11% down. And she's owner financing the property at 2% interest nice. for, for 30 years. Nice. And not only that, that's an $1,100 a month payment. <clears throat> I got her to take $800 a month instead of $1,100 for the first three years. A thousand a month for the next seven years, and then twelve hundred a month until paid off, which would be thirty years. Why did I do that? Because it allows me to get an increased cash flow. So we're going to fix up the house a little bit. Uh, that's actually starting today. Uh, they're going to do about forty thousand dollars worth of work, and um, that will probably produce about fifteen hundred a month in cash flow. And I'll hold that property forever. Yeah. Well, so Gary, that. here here's the point. And um, the reason I wanted you to go through those examples is you uh, invested twenty five hundred dollars on the first deal to make eighty thousand on the flip. On the second deal, right there, you invested twenty five hundred dollars to get fifteen hundred dollars a month cash flow, and that will go up over time. So that property, other than the the rehab fix up that you're putting in it. Um, just the cash flow will pay for the twenty five hundred bucks uh, by the time you get your second payment. <laughs> so, yeah, well, actually, I'm sure you're gonna get a um, I'm sure you're gonna get a rental deposit. So by the time you get a rental deposit and your first month's rent, you've already paid for the marketing. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I like I like my I like looking at things like my cash on cash return. Right. So I bought the A frame. I'll probably be into it for about two hundred thousand. And, you know, I'm, and I don't want to turn that into a, into a rental because and there's a whole bunch of reasons. Um, but then the owner financing deal, if you look at the amount of cash that I put into that property all in, it's about a 25% annualized rate of return right. for the life of the property. So, you know, I, so you were asking, you know, I don't look, if you're, if you're a general contractor building a property, you don't just have a hammer. You've got a crew of people and you, you know, you got power tools and, and all kinds of things. So I look at wholesaling as like a hammer. I look at the deal as to cash now, cash flow and cash later. And I'm always looking at, at the deal as fine, uh, you know, the finance coming from the banking, uh, from a banker's perspective, as, as well as leverage. How can I leverage other people to do all the work? And, and focus on the high money making activities. Like what I'm, my superpower is talking to sellers and making great deals. Right. And then I get other people and pay them, right, to do everything else. So I, I encourage, I see a lot of real estate investors, they get trapped trying to do everything themselves. And this business is a game of leverage. It's, it's leveraging other people's money, but also leveraging other people's time and experience and resources. And, um, and, 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 and don't, you know, don't try to save nickels that are costing you hundred dollar bills. Exactly. You know, Gary, one of your quotes that I recall uh, ties right into this uh, time management that you're talking about. And that is, I've heard you see, I've heard you say, be very deliberate with your time, intentional with your time. And I've heard you say, if you, if you're, uh, if you're the run in the company, and you're doing a $10 activity that you could pay somebody else $10 to do during that, you're only worth $10 an hour if you're doing it, right? That's so right. you're absolutely focused on um, focus on the high, the high money-making activities. So speaking of that, Gary, what would you identify as what the high money-making activities are that say the CEO or the owner, the real estate investor, should be focusing their time on. Yes. I, I'm going to give the specific because I've said this over and over again. If you're a CEO and you're doing $10 an hour work, you're going to have a $10 bank account. So you need to know what the value of your time is. 
And I actually will give everybody a website of where to go because I give you the formula of how you can calculate this out. So at the end of the day, you're going to look at how big of a bank account do you want at the end of the year? Let's say it's $500,000. And you're going to work 40 hours a week in that business. I work 12, by the way. And I have three businesses and I allot 12 hours to do those businesses, which means I have to have a huge amount of leverage with a staff and, and people. But if $500,000 bank account and you're going to do 40 hours a week, that means the value of your time is $250 an hour. And any time that you're not, you're doing less than $250 an hour, you're not going to actually make the money. And so as the CEO of your business, as the true real estate business operator or business owner, the high money making activities is building a team, it's raising money. And it's closing big deals. And that, you know, I, I, if like a wholesaling business, I always tell people, hey, once, once you get the, the, you, you get an operator in that wholesaling business and go into, that's when you can go into apartments. You want to, you know, if you got somebody that's running that business and, and giving you a return, now you can go after bigger, bigger opportunities. So high, high money making activities, you have to be extremely deliberate. And raising money is a huge one. Um, that's all relationships. And it's not very hard. A lot of people make it a lot harder. It is, you know, raising money or closing big deals, it's the same principle. You got to build a relationship, you got to establish trust, and then you have to, you know, come up with a solution to somebody's problem. And there are a lot of people that have money and they just don't want to do the work. And, and people throw money at me. I, 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 I had a gal on a, a a young gal. She made a lot of money in technology, and I was on a flight to Salt Lake City. Uh, this was about two years ago, and she just started ask. I started asking her. We're in a plane ride, about thirty minutes coming into Salt Lake City, and I just said, "What are you doing in Salt Lake City?" And so she told me, and she said, "What do you do?" And I basically told her, "I'm a uh, I'm a lender, a uh, real estate investor, but primarily a lender." and I liked, I'm, I'm coming out to Salt Lake City to evaluate some big deals. And so we started chatting about it. And at the end, she goes, gosh, I've always wanted to do that. I've got a bunch of money. You know, I just don't know where to get started. And I, I told her, I'm like, you know, I usually am finding deals. And if you'd like, you know, come back to California, we can have coffee and I can walk you through what I do. And in fact, if you want, I let you even piggyback on one of the deals that I'm working on. So you don't have to do all the work and you can kind of be in a deal that I'm already doing myself if you'd like. And, you know, once you do that a little bit, then you can kind of go off on your own. And so, you know, I, I can't even tell you the amount of money that I've gotten from her. So building it is not, you never, rule number one of raising money is never ask for the money. Rule number Absolutely, two. Absolutely, Gary. Rule, I mean, I'm I've raised millions and millions and I've never asked for it. Never. I've never, asked. I've never once asked for the money. So let, let me let you answer the question. Um, how do you raise money without asking for it? You build, you build a relationship and you, uh, and you share with people what you're doing. Absolutely. So I, I just tell people what I'm doing. Um, you know, I always come from the real estate. I don't tell people I'm a real estate investor. I tell them that I'm basically, I run a portfolio. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a family office where we are getting great returns off of real estate as the asset class. And, uh, and I create enough, you know, real estate investing, people know about, you know, basically building a portfolio around real estate as the asset class, people ask more questions. So, right. you know, somebody says, what do you do? And I'll just tell them I'm super excited. I basically, uh, you know, real estate's one of the greatest investment opportunities with some of the lowest risk and greatest returns. And I've got a little formula and I have a lot of family money and I invest my own money and some for my friends and uh, absolutely love it. And then I immediately turn it back to them. So what do you do? <laughs> and they'll always come back and say, hey, tell me a little bit more. And I don't, you know, if I... If I share it, I'm, I usually will say, hey, I'd love to share what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Um, I always come from a perspective, are you, are you, you're either the student or you're the teacher, okay? Right. Now, if I'm talking to a very wealthy 
person. I love raising money from people that are wealthy. Um, maybe they've made a fortune in Silicon Valley or on the stock market or in cryptocurrency. And so sometimes I will come to those people or Wall Street or whatever, and I'll come to them as the student where I'll be like, hey, I'm about ready to go invest in a pretty sizable uh, deal. And I would love to get maybe some of your ex expertise to see if I have any holes or anything I'm missing. So I'll come as a student and usually I'll walk them through it and ask them what they think, what kind of questions do they have. And usually they'll come back and say, I really love it. I'd love to actually participate in that. Or mm -hmm. I'll come in from the teacher, like this girl in Utah, where I'm a subject matter expert. And, you know, I come from a, always a place of giving. And I, you know, I, I can sit down with her. It's, there's no hidden agenda because I would love to share with her. She wants to learn real estate and I'll walk her through it. And I love people to piggyback off of deals. So sometimes I'm going on in on a deal. I like to put a little bit of my own cash into the deal always, uh, if you have it. It makes it a lot easier to raise money if you're putting a little bit of your own skin in the game. And um, what I found is most people want the returns. They don't want the work. And, and so I've done that for you know well over a decade. Raising money is actually a lot easier. It's mostly mindset. A lot of people have fear because they think that they have to go in and ask for the money. When you just take that off the table, you just build a relationship and build some trust. And the other thing I'd say is, there, you know, this is a Warren Buffett thing. Warren Buffett talks about real estate investors. He says, buy low, sell high, and never lose investor money. So your investors are your customers. Okay, more than the seller, more than the buyer, more than you. Investors are your customer. So you always take care of your customer. And I'll just tell you, you do 100 or 200 deals, and then you have one that's bad where you're losing investor money. And the, that's the one that comes back to really you know, hurt you from a standpoint of your mindset. So I've got an amazing track record uh, for investors. And they're, they're also my greatest referrals. When I'm going out to raise some money, I can say, hey, I'd love for you to talk to Ari or uh, Dilip um, and, or, or Dave in the Bay Area. And, uh, and these are the guys that would jump, jump on the phone and say, Gary is incredibly conservative and he always takes care of his investors. Even my mom, my, my mom's CPA will always come back saying, wow, your son is your greatest return against all of her other assets, right? So <laughs> never lose investor money. Take care of them. They are your gold. Well, I tell you what, Gary, that's a golden nugget right there. Well, Gary, uh, before we bring this uh, podcast to a close, how about let everybody know how they can um, get, get in touch with you. I think you might have some free gifts to give away, um, et cetera. So yeah. um, uh, let yeah. everybody know. I'll do that. So I'm going to give everybody a website. and. Um, I've got some special gifts on this website, as well as a new book that is almost getting released. Our publisher um, is doing the final touches on it, but I'd love to give my book to everybody when it comes out. It's called The Freedom Code. Um, everything I've talked about today, uh, it's, it's included in that. It's really, I, I, sh I share in The Freedom Code uh, how to get super clear on your why and your what not the how. The how is easy. People are like, how do I do a rehab? This book is around learning and being focused on getting financial freedom and having a life and, and before you jump into anything else. And um, so the website for that is www.realestateinvestor.com forward slash growth, G-R-O-W-T-H, realestateinvestor.com forward slash growth. And um, I've got a lot of really good materials, people, some of my best stuff. And also I've got an advanced uh, sales course um, that I'm actually going to give away, especially to your top students, uh, Jay. And that's going to be available that, uh, as well. It's, it's a compression coaching and, and sales course on how to build relationships, build trust, and come up with a solution to people's pain. And never having to ask for the deal or ask for the money. And it's very relevant. There's a lot in there around raising private money. And that will be for some of your top uh, students. So that will be available as well. <clears throat> well, I tell you what, Gary, um, 
what you talk about, the mindset, I talk about it all the time. And I have an elite group, mastermind group, that um, I'm going to invite you to uh, virtually speak at when we get together next. So I'll get back in touch with you on that because they would, particularly if your book has come out by then, um, uh, you would be a fantastic keynote speaker uh, in the mastermind group. Uh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, this is a great business. I will say the most expensive real estate in this business is the six inches between our ear and our other ear. And it really is around mindset. And, Absolutely. you know, get clear on that and get focused. Surround yourself with the best people like you're doing with Jay Connor and be committed. And this business is amazing. Fantastic. Gary, it's always great to uh, have you on the show. And uh, thank you for your time so much today on joining me on the show. And I look forward to seeing you at one of our upcoming uh, mastermind groups that you and I are in. Absolutely. Have a great one, Jay. Appreciate all right. it. And appreciate Thank you all so of much, you. Gary. Thank you. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of the podcast. And um, I need your help. Uh, if you like what you um, have heard today, be sure to like and share, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure and ring that bell. And uh, also, if you know someone that you think this podcast can make a difference in their life, uh, in their real estate investing um, career, um, please share the podcast, uh, the show, and uh, that would be fantastic. So I look forward to seeing all of you back here on the next podcast. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business to the next level, and we'll see you right here next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.